thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name, O Lord. I praise your name today, Father. I adore you, Lord. I exalt your holy name. I give you the glory. All the honor, O God, belongs to you because you are great and greatly to be praised. You are great, O oh God. There is none like you. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the first and the last. You, O oh God, are holy. You are righteous. You are just. So I praise their name today, O oh God. I lift you up because you are good. I lift you up, O oh Lord, because you have been better than good to us. You have spared our lives. You have given us the gift of another day. So today, O oh God, we will use this breath that you have given us to praise you, to magnify and adore your holy name. Because, Lord, you deserve it. You deserve the praise. You deserve the honor, Lord. You deserve all the glory. All glory and majesty belongs to you, O oh God. So we lift you up today. We come before you, Lord, humbly. Asking you, O oh God, to bless our lives today with your word. Let your word, O oh God, soak into our spirits. And let it become strength for us, O oh God, to guide us on our way. Lord, bless your people today. Every single person that has gathered here, you know them, O oh God. You see them. You know everything about them, about their lives, because you created all of us. Lord, you know each one by name. Lord, you know each one from before the foundation of the world. Lord, you ordained us to be here today, alive and well. So, Lord, we thank you today. We thank you, God. Thank you, God, for always reaching us, even when we're not faithful at times. Thank you for forgiving us, oh God, for loving us, for taking care of us, we cannot cease, oh God, to give you thanks, to give you praise. Because you're just so good. So Lord, today, take charge of the airwaves. Even as we move forward in this devotion, oh God, let your word go forth with power, with anointing, and with clarity. And it will reach the hearts, oh God, of your people and cause that change and that transformation to take place because that's why, oh God, we come, we come to you, we seek you, we seek your face early so that you can bless us with your word. Lord, do for us more than we can ask or think. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning, friends. Good morning. This is Diane, and I'm coming to you today with another word of encouragement. I am coming to you today with another word from the Word of God, and I'm absolutely sure, because the Lord has already ordained it to be so, that your life will be blessed. You will be blessed today. You will be encouraged. You will be uplifted. You will be strengthened in your inner man. You will be strengthened even physically because everything that we experience it first starts in the spiritual and then it manifests in the physical so as a result of accepting god's word today we will be strengthened holistically so i just want to give god thanks for you today each of you you're so faithful every morning without fail you are here just to hear from the Lord. So let's listen to what he has to say to us today. Today the Lord wants 
to remind us that we can do all things through him. We can do it through Christ. We can do it through Christ. Let's hear. As I share from my devotional this morning, when the way just ahead of you seems too difficult, turn to me and say, I can't. But we, you and I together, can. Acknowledging your inability to handle things on your own is a healthy dose of reality. However, this is only one part of the equation because a sense of inadequacy by itself can be immobilizing. The most important part of the equation is recognizing my abiding presence with you and my desire to help you. Pour out your heart to me. Ask me to carry your burdens and show you the way forward. Don't waste energy worrying about things that are beyond your control. Instead, use that energy to connect with me. Seek my face continually. Be ready to follow wherever I lead, trusting me to open up the way before you as you go. Dare to see your inadequacy as a door to my presence. View your journey as an adventure that you share with me. Remain in close communication with me, enjoying my company as we journey together. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, friends, some persons, could be some of you that are listening now, you know, as you grew up, regardless of where you're from and whatever your uh, background is all about, but some were considered the black sheep of their families. I guess some still are considered in that light. Black sheep, some were told you would never amount to anything. You were the least expected to succeed. Sometimes some were told you're too black, you're too pale, you're too ugly. You will never make it. Whatever your dreams, friends, whatever your dreams are, your dreams, your goals, your aspirations, I'm here to remind you today that you can do it through Christ. Yes, he delights in helping his people to be the best that they can be. You see, friends, sometimes because in some cases, parents, they didn't quite understand the value of their children or the value of those around them. They would speak words of negativity in their ears and some internalized it. They, they believed it. They, they took it on. They, they believed exactly what they were being told because some did not know better. They didn't have a foundation in Christ who told them exactly who they are. So they would believe whatever somebody says. And even today as adults, some people are still like that. They believe every negative thing that somebody else says about them. They take people's word as gospel over what the word of God says about them. But today, friends, the Lord is reminding us that we are not who they say you are. We are not who they say we are. We are exactly who God says we are. And he takes the light in helping us to achieve our goals and to become the very best. Now, the thing is, some have these feelings of inadequacy, deep-rooted. So it's like everything they do or everything they try, they don't really expect to succeed because of how they have been programmed because of the things that they were told. Some, on the other hand, they go hard in life because they're trying to prove to somebody that, hey, you were wrong. You were wrong about me. But you see, friends, the more we focus on 
what God has said and what God is saying about us. It's the least amount of time we will have to worry about what others think or what they are saying because you see we have some mean people in this world mean they have nothing good to say about anybody and it is wisdom <laughs> to be able to separate what they're saying from what God is saying and what he has said about you all right we need to know that God is there to be with us and to go with us along the way we need to understand that he's there to help us he desires to help us all we have to do is pour out our hearts to him and ask him to carry our burdens and to show us the way forward we cannot do it on our own friends so it doesn't make sense we set out to prove anything to anyone if we don't even understand that our source is the Lord, our source is Christ, he's the one that's going to help us. Yes, there are some things that we have absolutely no control over. So we're being admonished today not to waste our time on those things, thinking about those things, but to use that energy to draw close to God. Draw close to him and he will help you and little by little, you will see your life start to transform. You would see it start to change. You know, I grew up with my great-grandmother for part of my life. And I learned so much during that time. I believe I was around her for about seven years or so. Could be five, but yeah, somewhere around there. But the long and short is, I learned so much. And as much as... You know, she was a no-nonsense person and she taught us discipline and all of that. Both her and my great-grandfather, you know, she always said to us as, you know, her great-grandchildren, grandchildren, whoever it was that would be around her or come around, she always said to us, you all can be anything that you aspire to be, that you want to be anything because she saw you know beyond our rebellion at times i don't think it was easy handling teenagers she saw beyond our rebellion and she saw the potential in us right so i i cannot say that i got the negativity you know from that end no i remember one day she told me you you are going to be either a lawyer or a politician. <laughs> and there was a, a, a lady on the radio in Jamaica at that time, Miss Barbara Gludon. Those who are from Jamaica would be familiar with her. And she used to always tease me and call me Miss Gludon because she said, boy, you got, you got, you got, um, the, well, we would call it today the gift of the gab, but it's more than that. It's more than that, friends. But long and short, I was never made to feel as if I was a nobody in her care. And I'm saying there are so many people that grew up with the opposite. We didn't have a lot, but I'm telling you, one thing we had as a family, we had a lot of humor, a lot of jokes. We, when I, when I reflect on those times, I now understand where I guess my humorous side was developed. Because for those who know, I'm a comedian, you know, I, I can be when I'm ready. But I'm saying, friends, some people did not get the push or the encouragement that they need. So as a result, they grew up thinking negatively about themselves, about their abilities, about what they can or cannot do. They grew up with these limitations, limitation in mind and I guess body and spirit. Because you cannot go anywhere that your mind has not already conceived. I've come to understand that. So this is why the, the word of God admonishes us to renew our minds daily. There are some things that are trying to creep in to set us back, to keep us back. But the Lord is admonishing us to renew our minds, to trust him. Let's look at his word. Let's look at Philippians. This is a very popular verse. Everybody knows this one. 
Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. For I can do everything through Christ, who gives me the strength. Friends, we need to reprogram our minds. We need to unlearn some of the things that we learned that are not good, that are not positive. Especially those things that came to limit us and set us back and cause us to feel that we will amount to nothing. We cannot do anything. We're not good enough. All right. Some people were discriminated in terms of how, how their skin, you know, how their skin is too dark, too light, too this. No, friends. The Lord created all of us. And when he created us, he created us with purpose inside of us. It's interesting to see some nowadays sit on the side without understanding that purpose is in them because somebody told them wrong. Somebody told them that they're not good enough. No, friends. Let's reverse that. Let's understand that the Lord, once he has said something about us, that's what it is. And he's saying today that we can do it through him. What is it that you want to do? What is it that you desire to do? What are your goals? Do you have any? That's the thing. What are your dreams? What are your aspirations? I'm here to encourage you today, friends, to go for it. Did you drop out of school because of teenage pregnancy? Did you drop away from something that you were pursuing because you met a challenge? What exactly were you pursuing that you had to give up or you thought you had to give up because of circumstances, situations? I remember sharing with my son and even recently he was telling one of his friends about what I told him. I said to him, before you came along, I had this desire to go to Guatemala and to be immersed into the culture and the language so that I could learn the language, you know, because I've always wanted to learn Spanish. I mean, even throughout high school, struggled with Spanish. I, I, I think I took more Spanish classes than anybody else around right now, you know? just trying to master the language and I thought it would have been a good idea you know just to go and immerse myself live with a host family and learn the language well of course as time progressed you know other things came up and I just pretty much abandoned that that whole idea of going to immerse myself but then it dawned on me I don't necessarily have to go to Guatemala. You see, I was thinking about the quickest, easiest way because then I would have to go and be there for like three months. There was a, a program that I could have been a part of that would allow me to do that. But I'm saying, okay, so I didn't go to Guatemala, but I understood that even if I didn't go there, there were other opportunities that came that would help me to learn and I'm still learning and I'm saying I've been taking advantage of those opportunities all right so I'm saying do not stay there wherever you dropped off pick it back up again and keep going keep going knowing that the Lord is with you and you will make it do not shy away from being great in God do not friends do not allow anyone to define you because the most some people know how to do is to put others in a box, to limit them, to press them down, to keep them back. Yes, there are people who do that. Sometimes you do well on your job and by, by not by right, but you know, it would be a great idea for you to be promoted. But sometimes people do not want that for you. So they keep you back. And I mentioned some mornings ago that sometimes what they do, they give you these terrible evaluations. So you can't get a raise, you can't get promoted, you cannot move forward. But God is able, friends. Do not give up. Do not give up on your goals or your dreams. Keep on working hard. Work as unto God. And when the time is right, 
he will be the one to promote you. All right? Favor with God brings favor with man. And he will be the one doing the promotion. So when that time comes, all the people that stood in your way will have to step aside and just allow you to do what God has ordained you to do. All right? With God, you can do it. It doesn't matter what it is. Whatever it is that you have entrusted to him, he will help you to achieve it. All right? What exactly is it you're working on? What is keeping you back? What is stopping you? I'm asking the question several times because I want you to think for a minute. What exactly is keeping you back? Why do you think you can't make it? All you have to do is put your trust in the Lord. Psalm 62, 8 says, Trust Him. Trust in Him at all times. You people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Oh, my people, trust in him at all times. Pour out your heart to him, for God is our refuge. Friends, let God know how you feel about even your life. What is it that you need or you think you need? Let the Lord know. Talk to him. Build a relationship with him, and he will be the one to order your steps and to move you forward in him do not try to go ahead of him it doesn't matter how even on the other side it doesn't matter how accomplished or how achieved you are you still need God you still need God the Lord opens doors for us and he doesn't open open those doors for us to forget him or to become you know high and lifted up he expects us to maintain our relationship with him. Sometimes we pray and we say, Father, help me. I, I am seeking after this. And when he does, we forget him. We forget about him. That's not good. So we need to always check to see, okay, what is it that we need? What are our motives? And then as long as those motives are right, as long as we delight ourselves in the Lord, he will give us the desires of our heart. We can do it through Christ. All right? Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. That's Psalms 105 verse 4. Search for the Lord and for his strength. Continually seek him. So even after you have received or you have gotten what you asked him for, continue to seek him. Because I've come to learn, friends, that it doesn't matter how far you go in God, there's always more. There's always more. He's always inviting us to come up higher, come up higher. You can do more. You can do more. All right? So don't get stuck. Don't get stuck where you are. Don't look around you and say, everything just looks impossible because, you know, this is happening in my life, that is happening. It's time to break free, friends, from the bondages and those things that hold you back from becoming the best that you can be in God. He's there. He's there to help. All right? He's there to help. So put your goals down. Write it down. Because when you can see it in front of you, you'll be able to achieve it. Write them down. Ask the Lord, Lord, what is it that you would have me do? Start in that way. And as he starts to guide and lead you, just write them down. All right? And watch God help you accomplish those dreams accomplish those goals which finally finally you will understand that it wasn't about what others have said or how they looked at you it's about his power in your life all right you can become somebody in god regardless of who thinks what all right, I tell you, there are some specialists out there. They specialize in putting others down. They do. That's, that's what they specialize in. Some believe that because they have already achieved certain things that, you know, nobody else should even come close. 
some people are okay with you as long as you remain down and out but the moment the Lord starts to lift you up it becomes a problem but you have to be so determined to push your way through in God that it doesn't matter you know how the opposition comes it doesn't matter once you are in God and you stay with God and you seek him continually and you have a relationship with him you're gonna be all right you're gonna be just fine all right so just reminding you today friends that you can do it through Christ you can do it through Christ now I'm gonna pray for somebody who has set their goals aside who pretty much has put their life on hold waiting for circumstances to change before they pursue greatness in God why be good when you can be great why settle for mediocre living and mediocre results when you have God on your side and he can help you to achieve more. Friends, now is not the time to slacken up. Now is not the time to relax and say, you know, que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. No, friends, the world is waiting on what's on the inside of you and you can do it through Christ yes you can you can do it through Christ because he's the one that will empower you he's the one that strengthens you he's the one that enables you it's not you in your own strength you by yourself is weak at best all right so trust in the Lord and allow him to strengthen your life delight yourself in him communicate with him love him and you will see what he does with your life those who were the least expected to succeed watch and see what God will do with your life he will turn things around in such a mighty way that maybe those around you would not even be able to recognize who you are in a good way because you would have changed so much. It's like you would have received a spiritual makeover, a spiritual overhaul, where you finally realize who you are in God. And you move towards those things that he has mapped out for you to do. And you're not afraid. You move courageously. You move boldly. And you move quickly according to how he has set it out for you. Don't lag behind. That's what I mean in terms of it's not speed in and of itself, but don't don't lag behind when the Lord is saying go, just go. Just do it. I guess that's you know, Nike, their slogan is just do it. Just do it. Alright? Let's pray. Father, I give you thanks today. I bless your holy name. I thank you for your word, your word that has come to our lives today to lift us up, to build us up. Even when others try to tear us down, Lord, your word is there as a guide. You have reminded us today, O oh God, that we can do all things. We can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. Help us, O oh God, to look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. Lord, it's you that we need. You are our source. Everything we need is in you. Help us, O oh God, to understand that. Lord, forgive us of the times when we have agreed with the adversary about those things that he has said about us and about our lives. Forgive us, Father. Help us to see the error of our ways. Help us, O oh God, to cling to you and to cling to your words and to let our, our lives be guided accordingly. Help us to read it. Help us to understand it. 
and help us, O oh God, to be able to apply it to our lives. Because your word is spirit and life. It comes alive every single time we hear it. And Lord, your word has never returned unto you void. So let it accomplish now all that you have set it out to do. Lord, I thank you for each person, every person that's under the sound of my voice. I thank you for their lives. You see exactly where they are. You know everything about them. Yes, Lord, you know them. You see them where they are, wherever they are. In the USA, in the Bahamas, in the UK, in Canada, in the rest of the Caribbean, oh God. You see each person even now. And I pray, O oh God, that you would cause them to come into the fullness of their lives in you. Those things, O oh God, that you have ordained from such a long time for their lives that are yet to be manifested. Not because you have not already spoken, O oh God, but it's because they are timid, they're afraid. They're afraid. There are some who are afraid to succeed. They're afraid. But Lord, I ask you today to empower them with a spirit of boldness and to remove fear and doubt, O oh God. Fear of failure. Fear of the unknown. Fear of trying. Lord, help your people to understand that you call us to a life of excellence, O oh God. And all you ask for is our best. And you will do the rest, O oh God. Help us today to focus on those things that you have given us to do. You have given us some tasks, but some are so easily intimidated, oh God, by the adversary. He comes and he roars like a lion. He goes about seeking to devour. But Lord, today, today, oh God, change will come transformation will come minds will be changed minds will be renewed and your people oh god will see themselves the way you see them they will not see themselves as failures because somebody told them that they're a failure they would not see themselves oh god as failures because somebody thought wrong about them lord you are their vindicator you're their peace our peace so Lord, today, I pray that you would bring that spirit of renewal, newness. Let a fresh wind blow across their lives, O oh God, where they will come into their dreams. They will come into those things that you have already spoken. It will manifest in the name of Jesus over every life. Every life that has been stunted. Every life that has been set back. Yes, Lord. We even see the plots and the plans of those who tried to keep them back. But Lord, when you open a door for your people, no man can shut it. So Lord, I thank you today that things are changing over their lives, the atmosphere over their lives. It's changing, it's shifting right now to accommodate everything that you have for them and it shall manifest in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything, oh God, that has been held up by the Prince of Persia, we say release right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Release, release. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Do it, God. Do it, Father. Do it for your glory. Cause them, oh God, to succeed beyond measure. Every person that has had to shelve their goals because it just didn't look possible. I pray, oh God, that they will take them out again. Look at them and be ready to move forward with you once again. Because Lord, you have not created us to fail. Lord, we will succeed, every one of us, all of us. 
O God, who believe, be it unto us according to our faith. Lord, you said if we have faith, even as a mustard seed, we can move mountains. We can say to the mountain, be thou removed and go into the sea and it shall be done. So help us, O God, to decree a thing and watch it come to pass over our lives. The lives of our loved ones, our friends, those with whom we come into constant contact, O God. Help us to be influencers for good. Because, Lord, we know already that we're the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath. Lord, you, you have the best for us. Help us to see that and go for it. In the name of Jesus. Lord, help us now. Help us, Father. Heal those who are sick. Provide for those who are in need. Change the status of those who are in lack. Where every day it seems like the same thing. Facing the same issues, the same problems, month after month, year after year. It's like an, an unending cycle. Lord, I pray that you would break the cycle over their lives now. That cycle that keeps them trapped. Mighty God. Jesus, some are trapped in relationships that you have called an end a long time ago. Lord, some are being held back by the company that they keep. I pray, oh God, that you would cause a break to happen in those areas, oh God, that do not please you. Some are afraid to launch out because they just don't know what the result will be. But Lord, help them to move by faith and not by sight. Because it's not by might nor by power. It's by your spirit, O oh God. Help your people today to come out of the rut, to come out of that dry place. Lord, I thank you now. I thank you now, God. I bless your holy name. Thank you, Father. Do it, God. Do it for us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Friends, the Lord wants you to succeed. He wants you to do well. Yes, he does. He wants you to become the best that you can be. He wants you to do your best. He wants you to become a leader. Oh yes, he wants you to show forth his glory in the earth. Yes, that's what he wants for you. That's what he wants for me. That's what he wants for all of us. All right, just be reminded today that you can do all things through Christ who gives you the strength. Your strength does not come from somebody else in that sense. It comes from Christ. Trust him. Rely on him. Sometimes people tell others, um, you will never make it without me. Really? What they should be saying is you will never make it without Christ. Now, that's a true statement, but not that you'd never make it without them. And some people believe that. Well, don't believe the lies anymore. And that's why some remain stuck. Stuck because somebody told them wrong. So it's time to rise up, friends, and launch out into the deep. It's time to get out of the boat. Just get out of the boat. Have faith. Christ is saying, come. Just like he said to Peter. Peter only started to sink when he took his eyes off Christ. Keep your eyes on Christ. Keep your eyes on the goal. Keep your eyes on the prize. And you will make it. It's not that other people, you know, are better than you are. Or they're brighter than you are. Or they're... No. The Lord can cause you to succeed. Even in areas that... 
others have failed. All right? You just have to trust God. Failure is not the end all. If you try and it didn't work, try again. At least you'll know how not to do it the next time around. Okay, friends? The Lord has really impressed it upon my heart that there are some who are really, really stuck, stuck in a rut, just going around the same mountain all the time. We don't want when this time next year comes, you're still singing the same song. All right, 2020, I call it the year of perfect vision. So there are some things that are going to be put in place this year that will manifest in 2020 because of the work that was done now in 2019. So do not sit anymore. Do not sit and wait for things to change. You be the change. You be the change, all right? So you hang in there with God and know that with him all things are possible. All things, all things. Write them down, pray over them. Ask the Lord to help you and he will. Okay? The other day I had to smile because I had, <laughs> I just had like a, a little flashback of something that I was trusting God for. And at the onset, it had looked so impossible. And I said, God, if this happens, you know, it's only you. And I shouldn't even have said the word happen because things don't just happen, okay? <laughs> you have to trust God. And know that he has your best interest at heart. He's not trying to punish you. Sometimes we're the ones that are punishing ourselves. And we say, oh, well, it's God doing it. No. But when I look back, I realize that that thing that I was trusting God for, it, it really started with a thought. You know, it was just a thought. And I said, okay, God, you know, is this your desire for me? And I was not afraid to say, okay, God, if it's not, then just <laughs> cause it to go away. But when I saw, when I looked and I saw how God just worked everything out, I said, okay, you know, everything begins with that thought, with, with right there. And that's why it's so important for us to keep our minds clear of negativity. Watch who you stick around, especially when you're trying to achieve certain things. Watch your company because sometimes people will say that they're your friends or they're with you but the moment they hear your dreams the moment they hear your goals the moment they hear what you're working on then you know there comes a resistance or some sort of opposition and then after a while you, you find you start to become discouraged and you don't feel like pursuing something that you know would have been great anymore and you're trying to figure out what happened Sometimes they discourage you and tell you, oh, that would never work. And when you look, they're doing it. <laughs> I tell you, friends, human nature is something else. So that is why our trust and confidence must be in the Lord. Okay? In the Lord. In the Lord. Sometimes it's good when your dreams and your goals and so on, they're in the incubation stage to keep it to yourself, just between you and God. I believe it's wisdom not to be too anxious to share, you know, everything. I, I, let me tell you, I, I, I could talk, right? But I know what to share and what to keep at times. And once I put it out there, I know that it's already, you know, gone through the gate. It's, it's already happening. Too late for the adversary to come now and try anything. But I'm saying, just trust God. With God, you can do anything. You can do all things through Christ. Okay? All right. So, it's time for me to go. And I just want to speak a word of blessing over you. You are blessed and highly favored of the Lord. 
favor with God will bring you favor with man. They will bless your life and they don't even know why. It's because the Lord has already spoken to them to bless you. All right, so you are blessed going in, you're blessed coming out. Everywhere you turn, you will see the hand of God in your life. You're protected by him, you're covered by him, you're guarded by him. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment shall be condemned. You are the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. You will be the lender and not the borrower. It's okay, you may be borrowing some stuff now, but that's about to change as you come into the fullness of God and all that he has for you. Recently, I mentioned acceleration and I know I hear from God because I saw all these other persons, prophets and apostles and preachers and teachers talking about acceleration. But I know that the Lord gave me that in my heart, you know, so, you know, it wasn't something that was being mimicked or parroted that he is accelerating his blessings towards his people. Hear why? Because the days are short. The days are short. So he is speeding things up towards your life so that you can accomplish everything before he comes or before your time here expires. All right, so if you know that, if you know that it is God's will for you to be blessed, you would never look at your circumstances and your situations the way you have anymore, never. Because you know that the Lord's plan towards your life, they are good, good plans, good plans, man. Okay, so that's why now is not the time to pay attention to negativity and negative people and you know, cantankerous people always trying to fight you and oppose you and put you down and belittle you and put you in your place and, you know, no. Stay away from those people. Yeah, stay in a zone with God. You're not going to get rid of them, you know, don't get me wrong. But I'm saying, don't let what they're saying have any bearing on your life especially when it's not what God has said about you. All right? Know who you are in God. Stand firm. Stand strong. Sometimes the put down comes from places that you least expect. It sometimes comes from those whom you love and respect. And that's why some believe it. Oh my God, I gotta go. I'm just saying Sometimes it's going to come from your parents, your pastor, those whom you look up to, those people, your boss, your supervisor. And you think that what they're saying is fact because it came from them and you love, admire and respect them. No, you are who God says you are. I cannot emphasize that enough. You are exactly who God says you are not who they think you are because people can form all sorts of opinions that are wrong they don't know you like god does they don't know you like that all right so you don't yes you <laughs> i i always say it because it's true you love and you honor and you respect people but when they start to cross the line and cross boundaries and try to speak negativity into your life. You have to know when to just cut them off. You understand what I mean? Cut off. You don't let what they're saying get into your spirit. Reject it. Set it aside. Do not go in a corner and cry. Oh, if you know what my mother said about me or what she said to me. No friends. Come on. God knows you best. Okay? 
God knows your best and he wants the best for you. So now is the time. Now is the time, friends. All right? To launch out and just be great for God. Impact your world. Become an influencer for the good. Become a world changer, a history maker for Christ. All right? Do things excellently for him. This is encouraging me as well because I have my areas of struggles and setbacks. Like I have an issue with punctuality for argument's sake, you know. I have to start out a whole hour before and I could start out a whole hour before and still end up being late. You understand? So I ask the Lord to help me where that is concerned. I remember one Sunday recently I got to Sunday school on time. I was teaching and the superintendent started to clap and I start like, really? <laughs> but I'm saying, friends, we do have our struggles in different areas. But if we trust God and if we do our best and leave the rest to him, he will take care of us. All right. All right. That's it. So until we meet again in this fashion and until you come and assemble again just to hear from God, please. Take care.